Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kagem. I want to talk to you guys today about double standards that exist in luxury shopping. I think this is a really important topic and this is something that's been percolating for some time. I have two examples specifically that I want us to discuss and you guys make sure that you comment, like, share and subscribe to my channel so that we can get into all of the details. There's this socialite in the US called Milano. She used to date the rapper Meek Mill, he used to date Nicki Minaj. I love Nicki. So when I saw this story, this is like from last year, um, they had broken up, they were expecting a baby together, they broke up, whatever. So on this like gossip YouTube channel, people were commenting about her and saying, oh my gosh, like she owns this fashion business, it's really expensive. <laughs> people were really slagging her off. It was a bit over the top, to be honest. And people were saying, oh, I bet you that all her stuff is made in, from AliExpress. Her fans were like responding and saying like, oh, well, I bet you'd buy Cartier though. You know, I bet you'd buy Louis Vuitton, I bet you'd buy Chanel, but you won't support um, someone from your community who's trying to build a luxury fashion business. I Honestly, I didn't really care that much because I was just like, okay, whatever, you know, but I did hear that some of her clothes are expensive. Like she has puffer jackets, which just remind me of being in school because I, I used to wear puffer at boarding school when it was raining. But she has these like luxury puffer jackets, which are like $600, $700. Well, she did at the time when I saw the video. I don't know if she still has them now. And people were talking about those jackets, like, you know, you're trying to get me to pay $600, $700 for a jacket, like, goodbye. I'm not paying $600, $700 for a jacket, girl. And people were critiquing that and saying that they felt like, they felt like, why would I pay that much money and I don't feel like you're a real luxury brand? I think it's a really interesting double standard because no one would question Bali. I think Bali technically is the oldest luxury brand in the world that is continuous today i could be wrong because i remember watching this video people talking about bali and louis vuitton and which one is the oldest one i don't remember but no one would question bali vuitton cartier swarovski crystals um about their luxury pedigree so the question is why are people going in on her and saying that she doesn't have a real luxury business so her fans were like, because she's a young black woman from a minority ethnic group, that's why she isn't being taken seriously. To a certain degree, I actually agree with them because I do think it's harder for designers of color to like be really successful in the fashion industry. There are a few that have been successful, Duro, um, Tracy Reese, obviously Olivia Rustang is probably the most famous black fashion designer, I think right now. But I do think that a lot of people are very unrealistic when they create fashion brands. And I'll say this as an entrepreneur, I've seen some of some people I know who tried to do fashion and like it's crashed and burned. I don't think that you can wake up today and say, I'm going to start a fashion brand and I'm going to charge you a thousand dollars for a jacket or for a t-shirt. And you don't have what's called heritage and you don't have a pedigree in the industry. Louis Vuitton can today, literally today, they have tons of archives. They have lots of things that they've done in the past. Gesquia could say, today I'm not going to do anything new, I'm just going to pull from my archives and update things. It's a pretty lazy way of doing things, but it's it's very easy to do that because they have the heritage and the pedigree. It's not because they're European owned, but it's because they've been going for ages and ages and ages. I thought it was really interesting how people were just reacting to that because I do think that there's a kernel of truth in that in it that a lot of people from minority ethnic groups don't really want to buy brands that are made by other minority ethnic people. And I think this is like a taboo and it is a dirty secret. But at the same time, I'm just like, you know, I don't, no one really knows your brand at the same time. Okay. Like respectfully to her, she's a beautiful woman and she looks like she's very successful with her label and good for her. But her fans were like not understanding that not many people know her. Like I, I heard about her because she was dating Meek Mill. I didn't know about her fashion brand outside of Meek Mill. Once I heard that she was dating Meek Mill, I was like, oh, okay, let me check out her fashion brand. So I think that that is a huge double standard, but I think a lot of people are also hypocritical because the same people who are saying, oh, support her, you know, you should support another woman of color trying to create a fashion brand. They are the same people I'm telling you right now, who would absolutely go and buy a Chanel flat bag today if they had the money. And I find that so annoying and hypocritical. So anytime I see these things, I'm like, can you people just stop because you're just being hypocrites about the whole thing? It was really interesting because I've also received comments on my channel um, from the beginning up and even up until now, like, why don't you talk about other designers? I have talked about this designer on this channel before called Mateo. He's from Jamaica. He makes these beautiful luxury handbags. They're stunning. The price point is like 
I don't remember exactly now off the top of my head, but it's like under $600 and he makes top handles. He makes all kinds of bags. To me, I think he's the most exciting um, black fashion designer that I've seen um, in a really long time. And I think his work is beautiful. So I think that there is hypocrisy there in that people want you to talk about um, luxury brands that are made from people of color, but the same people who want to talk about luxury brands for people of color are not buying those items. I am telling you this now, and I just know it. And if you are coming in the comments to be like, oh, talk more about like luxury brands from people of color, I better see black owned brands in your wardrobe right now. You better not just be sitting on the internet talking tough because that is not something that we're interested in. The second double standard I've noticed in luxury shopping, and I think this is more, it's just kind of silly to me, but I think it's becoming a huge double standard, is right now there's a, there's a lot of, um, I think, pushback against luxury YouTubers. I've noticed that. There's a huge kind of pushback against luxury YouTubers. A lot of people are like, oh, I think C19 is finally going to like crush the sort of luxury shopping YouTubers. I see myself as more of like a shopping channel because I do post like high street brands. So I see myself as luxury shopping and high street shopping. Obviously I do focus more on luxury brands, but I've noticed that even in like a lot of the comments for like big, big luxury shopping creators, there's a lot of pushback and a lot of negativity concerning unboxings, concerning hauls. So in this one forum, I saw people commenting about one specific um, luxury YouTuber and they were saying how they felt like, you know, this is going to be the end of her channel because people are just tired of watching unboxings and no one cares about that anymore. And we live in the world of C19. Like, why should we constantly just have to like watch videos of you unboxing things when people are losing their jobs, people are, are struggling, people are getting sick. I find this so strange because anyone who is anyone who has a YouTube channel knows that when you go into your analytics, you see the most popular videos on your channel. So you see your videos, whether they are Cartier or they're about Hermes or LV or Chanel, etc. You see what people want to see. And like this month, normally January is supposed to be a slow month for YouTubers. It tends to be quite slow. For me, it's like the best views I've ever got, but I have definitely been dedicating like more time to this channel because obviously I was on holiday and I was like, you know, I'm gonna continue for January just posting as, as much as possible, even though after January I might slow down a bit. Now, the thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the times this is just pure, plain out and simple hypocrisy. People are saying, oh, you know, Luxury shopping YouTube YouTubers is a passe, constantly posting about all the luxury things that you're buying is like really, really gauche and it's passe. But the same people who complain about this are the same people who watch these unboxings, who watch these things. I can tell you from my channel, I haven't done a luxury unboxing on this channel. I have luxury items that I haven't shown. Just because I haven't shown it doesn't mean I don't have it. That's like the first thing. And second of all, when it comes to luxury shopping, the videos that do really well are unboxings. Any person who is a creator, please comment and I know you'll validate what I'm saying. The videos that do well are unboxings. The videos that do well are luxury hauls. Why do you think people do videos and they say like 45, like I think that creator, I forgot her name, this is a fantastic video, like $45,000 luxury shopping haul. You know, I watched that video, it's really, really great. People do that because that's what gets people to click on your videos. And ultimately, whether you're doing YouTube full time or whether you are doing it like me, you're just doing it as something that you find fun. You still want people to enjoy your videos. I don't, I, I don't see the point of me wasting time like creating these videos and these aren't videos that you personally want to watch. I want you to enjoy them. I want you to watch them and I want my channel to be successful. Maybe that's because I'm a Taurus I'm an, and I'm already an entrepreneur. So I'm competitive and I want to succeed. But I think that's what most of us want. So this whole thing of like, oh, luxury YouTubers should find something new. Obviously, this is mainly an attack on female luxury YouTubes. There are a few lads out there doing luxury shopping and they're doing great as well. But this was really, this is really geared towards women. I find it just so hypocritical. I think it's a massive double standard because if the person isn't uploading what they're buying, what they're shopping and all that stuff, then they're accused of being broke, not having any money, or they're just like, oh, that person never buys anything. But then if they're buying something, they're being accused of being insensitive to the global biblical plague that is harassing the entire world right now. 
So I just want people to kind of talk in the comments and tell me what you think about these double standards. I think they're really interesting double standards. I think the first one is a true double standard. Like people are like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna buy from your so-called luxury line that you probably got from AliExpress, which is a really nasty <laughs> accusation. But at the same time, you're happy to go and be harassed and play the Hermes game and suck up and buy, you know, Collier de Chiens and all these other things so that you can get a back in. It is a double standard, absolutely. But this second one, I just find even more annoying just because I'm like, you know, people who, a lot of people who do watch luxury shopping channels um, have to understand that ultimately the person who is making the videos, whether it's me who's just doing this for fun because I enjoy it, whether people who are doing it full time, we're doing it because we want you, whoever's watching right now, to enjoy it and to vibe with it and to think it's beautiful and great. If you don't watch it, then that would highlight like, oh yeah, okay, people don't want to watch unboxings anymore. Unboxings are still horrifically popular and they're going to continue to be popular. People love watching people unbox and share, you know, things that they've bought. Me personally, I actually prefer watching like shopping vlogs where I can see like what's new in the boutiques. I, I like watching hauls. Um, I think one of my favorite unboxing videos that I've ever watched was Andrea at Style for Life. She did this like triple Louis Vuitton unboxing. It's so fabulous. I'm going to post it in the description below. So you guys have to check it out. So I think that one of the biggest critiques basically just to sum everything up and to pull it all together is people love complaining about anyone who's doing something which maybe they themselves want to do but can't do but they also just love to complain in general so in the beginning i would also see some of these critiques about my channel like oh you need to post more of your own jewelry collection why don't you post more of this but then when i do post that i have posted my handbag or my, my handbags like my high street bags on here that didn't really get a lot of views but when i talk about cartier and i talk about my you know my cartier wish that that's get that gets a lot of views so you can't complain and say people are overspending in c19 but at the same time when you see more affordable videos you don't want to watch those videos you only want to, want to watch the videos that are about super expensive brands let's keep that same energy guys because these double standards are getting tiring tell me what you think of this video like comment share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any of my future videos and yeah make sure you keep watching and i'll see you in my next video